Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. If you go to my main channel page and search my channel for the word slinky, you will come across a video called Slinky Dipole Antenna. Uh, it uses those things, you remember those things called slinkies? I believe they were invented in the 1940s. They are like inductors when you use them electrically because they're made out of metal. Now, one of the problems with a slinky dipole antenna is the fact that those slinkies will sag uh, when you use them as shown in the video. They won't run straight along. The way to make them run straight along would be to use PVC pipe inside that's just a little bit smaller than the diameter of the slinky to hold it horizontal and level. You can also use this technique, the slinky technique, for a vertical antenna, a vertical dipole, or a ground plane antenna. If you use it for a ground plane antenna, let's say you want to make a 40 meter ground plane antenna, and you use you, you don't have a, you don't want to go real high with it. Uh, you what you can do, or say a, a 40 meter vertical with radials in the ground, a small backyard, neighbors that don't like tall objects, things like that. Uh, what you do is you bury your 40 meter radials in the ground out of ordinary wire, 33 feet long approximately. And then you erect a piece of PVC pipe, however high, as high as you can make it before your neighbors start squawking. Uh, and uh, I guess you just have to test it or see what you can get away with. This would also work on top of a building in a city quite well. Uh, you'd have a vertical piece of PVC pipe with a slinky around it as the vertical radiating part of the antenna shortened from the 33 feet that it would normally be because of the inductance of the slinky. In order to adjust this antenna you would set it up and you would stretch the slinky up and down up and down until you get a minimum SWR at the station or at the feed point, I should say, if you can monitor it there. That will indicate, um, when you get a minimum SWR, whether it be 3 to 1, or 1 to 1, or 1 1.5 to 1, uh, 4 to 1, whatever, the minimum SWR indicates that there is no reactance in the radiating element of the antenna, and it's a pure resistance of some value. At the feed point then you connect an automatic antenna tuner and some transceivers nowadays have automatic antenna tuners designed specifically for them that you can place at the feed point of an antenna. I remember uh, my ICOM radio had one of those until a, a thunder shower created a surge sufficient to fry that little the components in that little thing uh, but uh, you use a an automatic antenna tuner at the feed point once you've ascertained that you have no reactants in the radiating element of the antenna that will provide you with a slinky ground plane or slinky vertical depending on whether it's on the surface of the earth or on the roof of a building elevated or whatever that will provide you with a slinky ground plane or vertical antenna. You use the PVC pipe to hold that thing vertically in place even when it's windy. Now, the one remaining problem is that the slinky may not 
be evenly spaced all the way along. It'll probably tend to uh, sag down a little bit so the turns of the inductance are closer towards the bottom of the antenna than near the top. Whether or not that matters, I don't think it really matters very much as long as the length of the antenna or the height is appropriate to eliminate the reactants. So maybe you only have 20 feet available, whatever. You can also trim the slinky itself, cut it, you know, and raise it up and down and up and down. Say so you have 20 feet of height that they will allow you. They, meaning your non-ham adversaries. You, you use then 20 feet, you cut a slinky to whatever length you uh, have, whatever length you want it to be, and you stretch it up and down and up and down until you get resonance at the operating frequency. Maybe you'll have to cut the slinky, maybe not. Maybe it'll be a little bit more than 20 feet. Oops! Your adversaries will squawk a little less than 20 feet just fine. You'll have a, a number of variables to play with and you'll have to play with them as they interact with each other in order to experimentally determine the dimensions, particularly the height of that piece of PVC pipe in order to get resonance at 7 megahertz. But eventually you'll find the point of operation that works the best from the standpoint of matching the antenna to the line. And then it's just a matter of putting the thing on the air using as low loss a coaxial line as you possibly can and start calling and making contacts. That's about all I can say. A general kind of idea. The specifics are up to you. You are a radio amateur, aren't you? Stangibalisco saying 73, signing off, and so long, which, on any kind of antenna, slinky or not, PVC pipe or not, coaxial line, balanced, unbalanced, whatever, any frequency invariably translates in my native fist to Da-da-da-da-da-da.